I have already cut out the shape, traced the top uh, with the binding that I removed, um, you know, alongside it. Uh, cheated it in a little bit on the line. Uh, I'm going to recut the binding channel uh, to make it nice and clean. Um, you know, get rid of that any uh, glue removal. Mark the center line uh, before that all the way around. Uh, this piece of uh, MDF. Cut it out with a jigsaw, then took it on my um, oscillating drum sander and got it as close to the line as I wanted to. Um, obviously, as good as you can be on that drum sander, you're going to get a few lumps and stuff like that. So what I took was a, a Stumac uh, uh, a nut spacing ruler and I double side taped some sandpaper on it and basically it bridges the gap it's gonna remove the high spots um, and leave the low spots so now I got a nice smooth finish all the way around so I've cut four pieces of plywood 21 inches wide 24 inches long it's three-quarter plywood four pieces of them it comes really close to three inches the sides on this guitar are three inches. So I'm gonna make a mold that's like this. This is from a 19, I believe 33 uh, D'Angelico Snakehead L5 Lloyd Lord copy. Um, this is four ply, as you can see. Use the screws to keep it together. I got inch and a half number 12s and two inch number 12s. Basically what's going to happen is it's going to get sandwiched. I'm going to make it where the top layer of this mold can come off, just like this one. This top piece comes off. See how it's solid? It's one piece. It doesn't split. This one is meant to come apart. If you take the top layer off, then you can, as you can see, I staggered plywood so this side sticks out so the middle piece it's like tongue and groove so it's like this goes in um, that's so when you have the top and the back glued together you don't have to trim around the sides in order to slide it out the top of this mold comes off in order for me to glue the top and the back um, and also to, to true up the sides and the kerfing perfectly flat on my surface plate so the top and the back have uh, a nice flat gluing surface. This guitar, being that the top isn't going to be have a flare over it, um, like the, an overhang for the fret edges, uh, I don't have to make it where I can split it apart. Even though I'm making a new back for it, the back's going to have a lip around it when I'm when I after I glue it on, but the top is so I can just slide it out towards the bottom and right out of the mold. I am, however, gonna make the top of this, this mold be removable for the same purposes of gluing the top and the back and truing up the kerfing. I picked the flattest, most true piece of plywood. Um, I cut the pieces, um, I had an extra piece of plywood and then I put <laughs> another really heavy granite surface plate on top of it, let it sit overnight. They're all pretty close to flat. This is the flattest one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin it. I got three, four 3 16th inch pins, okay? So I'm gonna drill a hole and a hole. That'll keep it in place. I will double side tape it to keep anything from moving, but I'll just do it here and here here and here little ones so it makes it easy I'm gonna line this up the way I want it to pin it trace the line drill a pilot hole cut it out on my jigsaw then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring it back to my drum sander get it real close to the line uh, then I'm gonna repin it retape it and run a flush cut bit cut this as a flush cut bit now, I will no longer need this. Then, I'm going to take this 
put it on top of the next piece. No need to, to do a center line or anything like that. I'm going to clamp it in the corners. I'm going to pin it. I'm going to pin it. I'm going to trace it. I'm going to cut it out again. Do the same thing with the drum sander and then bring this to the flush cut table, flush cut it. All right. Then I'm going to take those two pieces and put it on top of the, the, the third layer. I'm now going to pin it in a new hole. Okay. Every time you remove the pins or try to re-drill it to get to the next level, you're going to widen that and you're going to get some drift. So that's why I have four pins. So I leave the old pins in, I drill a new hole, stuff a new pin in there. This way, everything stays aligned. The pins keep everything together, right? Once I get all the pins together, what I'm gonna do is, I got a nut drive one. So this, these are 5 16 So I use a 5 16 uh, unibit um, with, it's got a 5 16 and a quarter inch nut drive. So I'm gonna drill a counter hole with a, a brad point because I want the surface to be flat on the bottom or a force a bit, whichever one I decide to use. It's gonna be wide enough for me to get my, my bit in and it's gonna be deep enough for it to be no more than half the depth of the, of the uh, three quarter inch plywood, but enough where the head doesn't stick out so I can sandwich these pieces together. But when it's all together, I'm gonna, I'm gonna screw ones in the top and I'm gonna screw some in the back. So basically, the top, the top is getting screwed to like the first three layers and then the bottom's getting screwed to the, to the, to the last three layers. When I remove this, I will then, on, on, the, on the second layer, drill through. All the screws, it's going to be like this. Because I don't want any of the screws to stick through, uh, so you, you know, you get hurt. But the pins keep everything aligned, that sandwich action will keep everything together. So that's basically how we're going to do it. I got my pieces centered, um, the overhang even, so now I'm going to trace it. It's not going anywhere, the spring clamps are strong. Oh, why machine is pencil? The lead? Is always the same size. If you use a regular pencil, as it wears, the, your line's gonna get wider. So now I've gone over this several times. It's dark. Now I can remove this. Spring clamps. Spring clamps. My crazy back and forth. Pick a spot that's fresh, like right there. That's why you put a backing board. Otherwise, if you don't have it, this will blow out.
wrench off and then I I rounded them over on my disc sander. I tried to keep the spacing relatively even. Um, and uh, I transferred the center of the hole to the back side so everywhere there's a screw I know where it is so I won't do throw my countersink uh, hole in that area so basically I'm bringing everything together like this every and every time I screw I put it in my vise and then I put a uh, uh, a Bessie clamp to, to clamp right next to the screw so it brings the wood together and put a screw in there these are all the the pin marks for every time I went down a layer so um, uh, so it kept everything true because if I pulled the pin out to drill it deeper a I would lose my position of where this was and then I would, every time I would redrill it I'd make the hole a little bigger and every time you pull it out you make the hole a little bigger that's why I had four pins two kept that the, the board in place um, and then every time I would to go a new layer I would drill a new hole and then remove the old pins and then tack it. Uh, and in between I traced the outline on the uh, plywood and uh, cut it out, hit on the drum sander to get it close and then flush cut it. Uh, <clears throat> before I removed these two pins, what I did was I drilled pin holes at, on each side of the, the bounce. Um, so I drilled completely through into a backing board, and then I made the pins just shorter than the thickness of this here. So I hammered them in, and if I ever want to get them out, all I got to do is tap them out, and then grab them and pull them out. Uh, the, the next thing I'm going to do is drill holes all the way around here and put the screws in. After that, what I'm going to do is put the final piece uh, on the back here which is going to be removable. So it's going to have pins in it that stick out maybe a quarter inch so I can pull them out with a pair of vice grips. Um, every time you take it off, it, before you do it, you should drill a new hole for the new pin. Um, this way it goes back on uh, the same way every time. You can remove it you know, a bunch of times. Um, ideally what you want is two molds. You want uh, a mold that's basically the thickness of the side, the height of the side, and then one that's going to give you like three-eighths of an inch on either side. Ideally, you want to be able to, to clamp on the curving on either side, and you will be able to. Um, so, and then you could level on a surface plate or a radius uh, disc, uh, the curving and the sides and everything. All right, so I've set my depth gauge. Uh, basically drill the depth of the little bit above the depth of the, the top of this Forstner bit. Um, I'm going to eyeball it. Um, I know where the, the other screw holes are, so I'm going to avoid them. I'm um, basically going to get in between each one of these hash marks. So here we go. Yeah, you basically want to just let it cut that first layer. Son of a bitch! It's number two. Well, for some reason this force in the bit's getting old, I guess. I didn't have that problem on the front. Something's going on. Yeah, there's some crap in there, that's why. Anyway, this bit's seen better days. It's not very sharp anymore. That's why I got that blowout. I had a few little blowouts. Uh, not a big deal. Forced a bit was probably just, it's just getting dull and those things are really hard to sharpen. Um, I mean, it's not impossible, but they suck. Uh, so, um, this bit has been set to the depth a little bit longer than the screw. I'm going to follow that pilot hole, uh, or that, 
that indent in the center for center of the screw. Here we go. Super strong, so you gotta, you gotta get it from either side to really keep this thing together really well. You gotta really put the left sides in here. Or freshly steam sides. 